Our scripture reading this morning comes from Mark chapter 13, verses 33 to 37. Take heed, keep on alert, for you do not know when the appointed time will come. It is like a man away on a journey, who upon leaving his house and putting his slaves in charge, assigning to each one his task, also commanded the doorkeeper to stay on alert. Therefore be on alert, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening at midnight, or when the rooster crows in the morning, in case he should come suddenly and find you asleep. What I say to you, I say to all, be on the alert. This is the word of God for the people of God. So our sermon this morning is titled, This Place is a Mess. And boy, it sure feels weird to say that when this place looks so wonderful, right? But we'll get into more about what we mean. So we finally made it to the season of Advent. And this time of year when we prepare ourselves to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And in this year where things have been so upside down and so different for all of us, I think we could take just a moment and say praise the Lord that we have come this far this year. So as a part of my ongoing training as a local pastor, I've been paired with other first-time, full-time pastors throughout the conference. And we meet once a month through Zoom with a leader that is the more experienced pastor. And during our first meeting, our mentor said that it would be a good idea for us to start planning for the season of Advent because it'll be here before you know it. Now, my first thought to myself was, what day is it? And I looked at the calendar, and this was easy because we were on vacation at the time. It was July 28th. And I thought, you know what? I have like 20 other sermons that I need to worry about before I can start to even think about the Advent season. Why would I even, or, ev- or more accurately, how could I ever begin to plan things like my sermon six months out in advance? I thought this must be for the people that like to preach in a series. You know, there are some that they like to pick a topic or they like to pick a book and then they preach about that for four weeks in a row. And surely this wouldn't be me because I, as I'm sure you've figured out at this point, I'm a week-to-week sermon guy. I follow the liturgical calendar, and I leave a very, very wide berth for the Holy Spirit to try to move my sermon where it needs to go each week. So really, I shouldn't be thinking about things six months in advance, that far out in the future. But as we continue to meet each month, the topic was brought up every time we were in group. And I thought to myself, We have plenty of time, right? Why is everybody freaking out about this? Is it just because it's our first Advent season and it's such an important season and everyone's so worried about doing it well for the first time? But I'm not sure if I was just being stubborn or if I couldn't acknowledge that I could possibly be wrong. But I think I'll just chalk it up to inexperience. You definitely need to make sure you're planning for the Advent season. So fortunately, that message finally hit home with me. And it's not the same as trying to prepare yourselves from a week-to-week idea. You have to plan it out accordingly. And if I had not, if I had continued to do things the way that I am accustomed to doing them, I don't think that we would have a bad Advent season. I don't think that my messages wouldn't be good. But maybe they wouldn't be as good as they possibly could be. And after all, we have to remember that Jesus doesn't ask for our half-hearted attempts. He asks for our very best. So I think we have it, have that now. But I have to admit that even with taking the time to plan further out, it still feels like this season snuck up on me. And this season tends to do that to people. We get so bogged down in the details of the Christmas season when every, and with everything that we feel like we have to get accomplished that it seems like time just flies by for us. 
Did we get our tree? Did we get all the decorations out? Did we get everyone the gifts that they had asked for? When are we going to be getting together this year? And how is that going to happen for us this year? All the things that we have to plan for. And I feel like we've tried to make the season even longer now. As you know, Christmas usually begins on November 1st. And I think maybe it's because people feel like they need that extra time to get prepared for Christmas at this point. But you see, there are so many things for us to worry about that it's easy for us to lose sight of the fact that we need to be thinking about the unexpected company that may come at any time. So have you ever had the experience of finding out that unexpected company is coming over? This, to me, is something that I absolutely dread. Now, that doesn't mean you can't stop by at the parsonage at some point if you would like, but just know that you'll hear lots of things going on before I open the door. So we try to keep things organized in our home. Well, to be honest, Carlin tries to keep things organized in our home. But as you can imagine, with our crew that we have, things get pretty crazy pretty fast. So when we find out that someone's going to be coming for unexpected company, it is an absolute tornado of activity going on inside our home. Things are getting picked up as fast as possible and put away. And I might be the all-time champion of throwing a toy across the room into a bin. Perhaps you can think about when you were a child and your parents told you that company was coming. So you need to clean your room. And I have to tell you, I had the ability to wreck a room as a child that I'm pretty sure almost no one could rival me. I was your classic, dump every toy out of the bin when it's time to play. And even worse, it didn't bother me to have things strewn about my room. So it would stay that way until someone noticed. And my parents would tell me that you need to clean your room because we have company coming over. And my first response was always, well, I think we should probably just shut my door and make sure that they don't open it. And that was never the correct answer. Now, when we think about this situation with unexpected company dropping by, we probably find ourselves saying, oh, no, this place is a mess. You see, the thought that someone might come in and see our lives or our homes not prepared for company really causes us to have some panic moments. But even more important, we need to be remembering and working towards making sure that we're prepared for the coming of Jesus Christ. Now, I know in this season of Advent, our focus is on getting ourselves ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus. We take so much time to prepare, to try and do all the things and then all the traditions for us and our family that we often lose sight of the fact that we need to make sure that we are preparing for Christ's return as well. In our scripture today, we're told, starting in verse 35, Therefore be on alert, for you do not know when the master of the house is coming, whether in the evening, at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning. In case he should come suddenly and you find yourself asleep, what I say to you, I say, I say to all, be on the alert. And what a great reminder for us that we are always to be alert and ready for Christ the Master may be coming back at any time. And when we look around our world today and we ask ourselves, is this world ready for the Master to come unexpectedly? I think we can easily say to ourselves, no, this place is a mess. We might even need to take time to look inside our own hearts as well. We might be fighting some battles that we just don't need to be a part of. We might be hurting so much from the way that this year is gone. Or we may just have feelings of dejection and our heart might be a mess right now. Well, you need to take comfort. And the fact that Jesus wants to be there with you, he wants to make sure you're taken care of in this life and in the next. He wants your heart to be ready for his coming again. One of my favorite sayings from the time that I spent in Mifflin County is that you need to red up the room. Whenever you know that you have company coming, you need to get in there and you need to red up the room. Well, brothers and sisters, we need to get out there and we need to red up this world. 
we need to look inside ourselves and make sure that we can red up our hearts. And as we look forward to our Advent series, next week we're going to be talking about being part of the cleanup crew. And the answer for us is not going to be when we have that unexpected company of Jesus. It's not going to be we need to shut the door and hope he doesn't come in and see it. We know that he opens all the doors and he checks all the rooms. We know that he is going to look at every part of our lives and and our souls, and we need to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to make sure that he finds us and this place, this world, in the best shape possible. So this week, I would like you to think about what is it that you can do to make sure that your heart is ready, not just for the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ, but for his returning as well.